today we will learn how to create a thesis report or a project report using any word processing software in the leading word processing softwares the, the first one the microsoft office and the second one open office uh, this facility is available in both of them so before we start the thesis report or the project report we have to create what we call the cover page so you have to write a final year project report that is going to be the first line uh, type the name of the project so i'm going to type here smart doctor then i'm going to write down a description uh, about the project that is that uh, a solution for heart diseases right so but before we go on i need to you know uh, bring all the text in the center so i'm going to select all these three uh, lines and i'm going to bring them uh, using the center alignment tool in the center then i'm going to uh, change the sizes the, so the size of the first line i'm going to keep at uh, 24 i'm going to change it to bold and the size of the next line i'm going to bring to uh, 40 so and i'm going to change it to bold again and for the description line i'm going to change the size of this line to 18 after that i'm going to go to the browser and i'm going to look for something on google logo and i'm going to get different search results so i'm going to choose the second one that i see over here so this is the image i'm going to you know right click and i'm going to save it in the downloads folder so you have to use save image as option right so when you use save image as option it is going to download the proper image okay and you save this image into the downloads folder once it is downloaded and i'm sure that it is downloaded i'm going to go to the insert option in this insert menu and select the image option and before i do that i will make sure that uh, the cursor is blinking somewhere after the uh, after this uh, you know fourth line so now i'm going to go insert image and i am going to go to the downloads uh, folder and there i find this logo i am going to click open and this uh, logo will appear uh, in my document so i can resize the logo uh, if i want to you know make it smaller or bigger depending on uh, my you know requirement and uh, then i am going to type something after this uh, image so that is something now uh, it, which can be you know problematic because my cursor is blinking at this point and i can either if i use the keyboard i'm using the right arrow key right now or if i click the cursor after this image i'm not able to type anything after the image which can be problematic right so if that is the case with you so there are two solutions for that either you first of all delete this image so i'm uh, turning on the non printing character or formatting marks the ind indirect solution is that i delete the image i insert i use the enter key couple of times and i make uh, enough spaces and then i keep the cursor blinking above some of the paragraph marks and then i go to the insert image and then i insert the image and now you see that uh, you may have to you know uh, you know use the enter key couple of times to come below this uh, this uh, image but uh, there is there is another way of doing this you can go and you can use this wrapping off this option of wrap off there you, you you're going to need to uh, you, uh, you you'll need to do two things first you'll have to turn off the wrapping then you'll have to change the anchor point to paragraph if anchor point is something which tells the word document how to treat the image so if you have selected the two character option it means that the the word processing software is going to consider this uh, you know image as a character and a character is like a b c so this image will be treated just like a b or c a single character right so but if you have uh, changed the anchor point to paragraph the word processing software is going to think that this uh, image is like a paragraph so it will be easier to maneuver the placement of this and the second thing that i told you the wrapping thing wrapping is actually something which tells the word processing software if you would like your text to appear alongside the the image so if if you want the text to appear on the right or left side of the image you can use these one of these options like wrap right wrap left optimal page wrapping or page wrapping etc but since we don't really want the text to appear on the left or right of the image we simply want the image at one, at one location we want the text on top of it and we want some of the text below the you know uh, the image so we don't really need any wrapping we don't re need wrapping at all so you can just go to this option and you can select page wrap off or wrapping off and as i said these all of these options these anchor options with slightly different names they are also available in microsoft office as well microsoft office word okay so now i'm going to you know get rid of so many of these enters and i'm going to now write down uh, the author's name so i'm going to write some name like this 
some random name and you can write down your name at this point. I'm going to select the font size for this uh, author names to 16 and I'm going to change the font size to 14 for the rest of the text and the rest of the text is uh, the primary advisor. I'm going to write my name because uh, this front page is from an actual thesis uh, project report. Then I want you to select the names in both of these advisors and I'm going to ch change them to bold just so that they appear slightly, uh, you know, they stand out of the text for, from the rest of the text. Now, this is how our uh, front page is looking uh, so far. And then I'm going to write down three lines that, I, that we uh, always, uh, we, we have a requirement of writing in our thesis report in partial fulfillment of the degree requirement of the degree requirements of BSc honors computer science right so uh, I'm going to change because all of this is in 14 I'm going to change it to bold only and um, yeah so there we have the uh, uh, the cover page but before we uh, move on to the next part I I'm going to do some uh, tiny uh, adjustments to this uh, page I'm going to bring the this title and this logo to somewhere in the middle of the page by you know uh, placing some uh, paragraph uh, you know inserting some paragraph marks like this so i've created some space uh, on top of uh, the you know on top on the top of uh, on the top area and i'm going to you know bring this these three lines towards the bottom slightly so that uh, you know uh, they look uh, slightly better than before so yes that's about it so you you can see that the vertical placement of all of these lines i have done manually using simple enter keys you can see using these uh, paragraph marks that I have placed different paragraph marks. Uh, if you want to be really precise, you, you should be placing a table here and you should be controlling the table heights using uh, using in the uh, units like inches, etc. But if you don't want to be that precise, you can use the paragraph marks and that will be fine. The other adjustment I'm going to make to this document is that I'm going to zoom in and I'm go going to show you a problem with this image, this logo. So this logo has a bounding box, a boundary or a frame, a very tiny frame on the outsides. So I can get rid of that uh, frame using a technique I'm going to tell you that is called cropping of the image. Uh, some of you may already know about it. So it's uh, something very common you do with images. So you right click this image and you use this option crop. In the format menu in image section, there is the, this crop option. Or if you right click the image, you can also see the crop option. So now when, I, when you click the crop, you see that the, the bounding adjustment uh, controls have changed shape. So previously the shape was like only squares. So now if I click right click and do the crop thing, now you see the shape has changed. The difference between these two things is that previous controls, if I use this control, it is going to like compress the, resize the image. But the, uh, you know, cropping option is not going to resize the image. It is going to like cut the image. It is going to get rid of certain pixels from any direction you can do it. From left or right or top or bottom, right? So uh, I'm going to again, so I'm going to go to the crop option and I'm going to crop each side slightly so that this bounding box or this this frame which we really don't want can go away so now you see that there is no frame on either side of the image and now the logo looks very clean and uh, uh, let me zoom out for to the complete page now the title page looks much better uh, than before the logo is exactly in center the uh, project title is here what this document is about is on the top uh, who are the people responsible in the whole project you can see in the uh, lower side of the middle part and some extra information you see at the bottom so this is how you know any uh, standard uh, front page looks like obviously there could be other options some people may like that the logo should be on the top and stuff like that i don't mind you can do it but for now for this particular exercise uh, we're going to stick to these uh, specifications any questions so we are going to so for example my cursor was blinking you know at this point over here and i press the control break using control plus enter key on the keyboard so i'm going to do that control enter so you see that because the cursor was blinking right after the author name everything after that went on to the new page so we don't really want that right so we i'm going to press control z or control z and it's all going to come back now i'm going to place my cursor at the end of the last line the last word of the last paragraph in this the first page and now i'm going to press control enter and you see that uh, i have a new page which is blank which is empty and we can start a new, uh, you know, something new in this uh, page. So now I want you to go to the browser, your internet browser, and go to Google and type Linux and uh, Linux OS and type Wikipedia. 
So the first result is for Linux operating system from Wikipedia. I'm going to click this. And I am actually interested in a couple of headings to be used inside as a sample headings inside my document, uh, you know. Uh, so I just want to save some time for typing all of these. Uh, so this is my idea. This is my plan. I want to have like five chapters in my thesis. Each chapter is going to have a name. And then they are going, there are going to be some subtopics. Sometimes there, there are going to be less subtopics or subheadings in my chapter. Some, sometimes they are going to be more, uh, you know. So I am going to simply select using mouse and left key. I'm going to select the first five uh, articles. Although I could uh, go uh, below in this page and I could also, uh, you know, uh, select the text uh, of my uh, everything over here. But I, I just want to uh, keep the document very clean and without any complexity. So I'm going to right click uh, this blue selected text. And I'm going to use the copy option. And you go back to the document that we were working on. And now I want you to use what I told you earlier that you can paste the text using uh, the uh, unformatted text option. So you go to this button, paste, per, or you could actually go to the edit option and paste special, and you could go to paste unformatted text, right? So I'm going to use this, and you see that all of the text is placed over here. And now you see that the um, text and paragraph properties from this part, this last part that we were working on, all of these properties are also copied to all of this text, the text that we have just copied. So I want you to select all of this text and I want you to clear the formatting for all of this text. So I'm going to clear formatting. So all of the text will now appear as the core, uh, as a core version of itself, uh, the, all the text without any formatting. Now I want you to see whether there are some characters that we may not be wanting. So here you can see when I turn on the non printing characters or toggle format marks. So you see there are some spaces here that probably we may not be interested in. So I'm going to go and get rid of, you know, all of these spaces. And uh, if I may, I, I would like you to tell, uh, I would like to tell you a, a, sh a shortcut for that. A, a, a shortcut which is really uh, has come in handy uh, to me a lot. So I'm going to uh, go to Control H. There's a shortcut called Control H. I'm going to uh, type here two space bars. I'm going to press space space bars twice here. Now we have two space bars, right? So this is the first one, and these are two two space space bars. So I'm going to replace. So obviously I told you that uh, nowhere in my document I would I ever want to see or I ever like uh, two spaces at the same time because if I want to create a space which is bigger than a one space I would definitely use something a proper technique to do that. So I'm going to find in my document anywhere if this uh, you know find option finds two space bars and I'm going to now there are two two options either I could replace this with a blank thing that it uh, that it simply gets rid of uh, any uh, you know space but the problem with that is that if you are left with so it, it deletes only pairs of spaces but what if the pairs of spaces were on uh, in uh, they were not pairs they were in odd numbers like there were five spaces then it would you know get rid of these two because i i look for these two it is going to replace them with nothing then it's going to look for these two it's going to replace it with nothing because it, it it will be deleted actually by nothing i mean that it is going to be deleted but what about the last one it is going to stay there so I want to find any space which is uh, in this format and I am going to replace them uh, it with, with a single space. And I'm going to repeat all of this process multiple times so that a point comes when I am left, left with uh, uh, no spaces. So I'm, let's, let's find. So I'm going to go find and uh, let's keep the cursor here. Find next. So it has found this space. I'm going to use the replace option. So now these two were replaced by one space bar, uh, one space. Uh, and I'm, uh, then I'm going to use replace. So I can use the replace all option and it is going to repeat this on all the document and it has done so and you see that everywhere it has only left with left left us with two space bars. I'm going to do the control H option ag again and I'm going to again find these two spaces. Now the previous search queries were all already there. I'm going to use replace all again and now you see that from everywhere double spaces are gone. So now let me turn off the uh, these uh, toggle ma uh, formatting marks and you can see that my text is really clean now. There is no extra spaces or you can, by the way, do the same with tab characters. Uh, tab characters can also be removed using this technique. So, okay, so let now let me uh, zoom in and uh, now coming to the main part. 
and the main part is i want you to rename the main headings to chapters so this i will call chapter 1 i'm going to place a colon mark here and i'm going to copy this word and i'm going to paste this word everywhere i see a uh, you know the main heading so this will be a chapter and this will be a chapter and by the way chapter 4 doesn't have a uh, you know sub topic or you know so it is going to be alone there and now chapter 5 and then there are so for the subheadings so i'm going to copy this word section here here and everywhere i see the subheadings okay so we here we have you know all the subheadings are now named sections and all the main headings are uh, named as chapters now i want you to go to this uh, this section of styling so in the last class i told you that we we have we are able to create custom stylings so uh, this is going to be slightly uh, you may you would like to you know you would actually want the video for this section because you may want to go back and see what i've done here so but for now let's uh, let's try to so i'm going to go to more styles and i should be able to you should be able to see all of the styles here on the side pane on the right side and if you don't you can use this drawer section to you know pull it and you will see the all the uh, all of these styles these are by the way built in styles so i'm not really interested in built in built in styles right now i want to have a i want to create my own styles reason the reason could be that uh, you know some particular uh, publishing company wants the chapter headings in a particular format and section headings in a particular format and those formats uh, are like templates and uh, uh, they are not readily available over here right so i'm going to when i'm going to use this plus sign over here to create a new style all, although i can go to the styles menu and i can use this uh, new style from selection option to create a new style so i can uh, use either of these options i'm going to start a new style first of all i'm going to give a name to my uh, style which is not even created yet so i'm going to call it my chapter heading so this will be the name of my uh, style this is a text style and i'm going i'm giving this style a name i'm going to press okay and i will immediately see that this style is listed in the list of uh, the styles i can uh, drop down this thing and i should be able to yeah so i see my chapter heading over here okay so i i want to create another style so i'm going to go to the same format uh, styles menu i'm going i'm going to use the new style and i'm going to name the sections uh, style as my section style i'm going to uh, or you know section heading right so i'm going to press okay now i see a problem with this newly created uh, style uh, the problem i would like to you know uh, 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 show you is that uh, if i use this minus sign this collapses into one style so it looks like the my section style is you know uh, a property of my chapter heading although my section heading i want it to be an independent style but due to some reason uh, this this is under the influence of the main chapter heading so this is a feature which is added in the uh, in this software and you can get rid of this inheritance by the way it is called inheritance uh, for some reason my section heading is being inherited or it is inheriting all the properties from my chapter heading so we will right right click this my section heading we will go to modify and we are going to see a lot of properties over here some properties related to text some uh, sorry fonts some related to paragraphs so i want you to go to first of all go to organizer tab and change this inherit from option now you see in the inherit from option you see the name of my chapter heading so we don't want that the problem of having this would be that if i change any properties of my chapter heading those properties are also going to be applied to my section heading and i don't want that i i want both the styles to be absolutely independent of each other so i'm just going to go drop down this and i'm going to select on top there there will be none the option none so i want this my section heading style to inherit from none to not inherit from any other style so i'm going to press okay so now you see that my section heading is separated from my chapter heading it has it is now independently listed down somewhere and uh, if i go to this drop down menu i see that my chapter heading is uh, somewhere here and my section heading is somewhere over here so far so good we have successfully created two custom styles and now i want you to select right click this my chapter heading and click modify i'm going to modify the uh, my chapter heading style and by the way this is an amazing option if you have to work on large documents for a very long time for multiple times even you can actually introduce 
your own template for example you came to university and you wanted to study for 4 years and every time you wanted to submit an assignment in a word processing software even in microsoft office or open office you could create your own stylings so that every time you wanted uh, to you know submit a new assignment you could simply use this double click the same style and all the properties of text and paragraphs is automatically going to be applied to all the select which was text which was selected when you double click that style style name so i'm going to show you show you that shortly inshallah so uh, let's go and uh, first of all i'm going to change some properties i'm going to go to indents and spacing and for chapter i'm going to add 1 inches below uh, sorry this is first line 1 inches below tech uh, below paragraph space because i want every chapter heading to sit on top of the page and i want to create a lar large space after that heading before i can you know type my chapter text that's logical right so the the chapter heading should be there and after that i shouldn't be able to type anything for at least 1 inches because i want the chapter heading to sit on top of all the text and uh, uh, slightly away from the text so i'm going to go below paragraph spacing to 1 inches i'm going to change the alignment to center because i want each chapter heading to uh, appear in the center of the page similarly let's go to font okay so let's uh, so i was saying that i am in the modification section of my chapter heading so i'm going to change the font style i'm going to leave the font style in the default name whatever the default name is and i'm going to go and change the style to bold and i'm going to change the font size to 20 okay and then i'm going to uh, press okay so how many properties have i changed inside the my chapter heading only i think four or three uh, four i think the first one is below paragraph spacing the second one is center alignment the third one is the bold style of font and the fourth one is 20 point size i'm going to press okay and i will not see any change in my document because i'm just creating a style although you will see uh, uh, the the this style to appear in the same formatting that you have just applied now you go to the my section heading you go into the modification section by right clicking it and going into modify and you will see this picture again and uh, you will first of all and for this i'm not going to change too much i'm i'm just going to keep the alignment to left which is by by default here and then i'm going to go to font i'm going to go, change the font to calibri just for a change i'm going to change the font name to calibri and i'm going to change the font style to bold and i'm going to change the size to 16 now i'm going to press okay and you will see that this my section heading sample this name also appears in calibri font with 16 font size so uh, and by the way because my text probably this text was already selected so this style is already applied i'm going to clear the formatting from it now i'm going to you know uh, one after the other i'm going to select all the lines all the headings and i'm going to uh, apply these styles that i have just created for the chapter line i'm going to select all this chapter line i'm going to double click this my chapter heading and you will see that uh, you know all the properties are applied the text is automatically center aligned the size has gone up to 20 there is now 1 inch space after the you know after the chapter name so all of these properties are automatically applied and as many times i'm going to do it uh, they are going to be applied now i go to the chapter 2 name i select all of this line so for this i have to select the complete line because this is these properties are related to text uh, uh, more than paragraphs so i'm going to double click this style my chapter heading then i'm going to go to this chapter 3 line i'm going to select all of this text i'm going to double click the my chapter heading then i'm going to go to the chapter 4 line i'm going to double click my chapter heading then i'm going to chapter 5 line i'm going to double click my chapter heading and then i am going to yeah so this was the last one so now i'll be selecting all the section section headings uh, and i can select multiple of them if they are you know placed uh, near to each other and then i am going to double click this my section heading style name and all of these properties will also be automatically applied to all of these uh, subheadings or section headings so i'm double clicking this and you see all of these properties are applied to uh, these uh, section headings so now i'm going to go select all of these i'm going to double click my section heading again and all the properties are applied then i'm going to this these i'm going to double click my section heading then i'm going to select all of these section headings so for the last part i'm going to uh, click this uh, my section heading and now all the section headings uh, are also have also copied this property okay so the next thing i want you to do is it is going to uh, sound strange but i want you to bring every single heading on a separate page 
we 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 won't be cutting pasting the text we don't need to do that because we have already done so much so we're going to keep everything there if if just as i told you in the, in an example over here that if if i if my cursor was blinking at this point and i had to place i i had used control enter all of the all of this text straight it uh, immediately went to the next page so i'm going to go and i'm going to keep my cursor blinking at this particular point because i want all of this line on a next on the next page so i'm going to set my cursor blinking at this particular point i hope you guys can see that i'm going to press control enter and see that it has disappeared from page number 2 it has gone to page number 3 i'm going to do uh, repeatedly do this thing i'm going to now place the cursor at the next line this line the second line from the first line and then i'm going to press control enter now you see that this previous page only has one line and this next page has all the remaining headings so i'm going to repeatedly do this second line control enter second line control enter second line control enter second line for this is this chapter name so the start of this control enter second line 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 control enter and you know Uh, we still have a, a few more to go second line control enter second line control enter second line control enter the reason i'm doing this is that i want to spread all of the document to uh, many pages because i really want you uh, uh, to show you something really magical in the software which is uh, such a handy tool that uh, you will really find it uh, uh, you know uh, very handy for the uh, inshallah for the rest of your professional careers and now you see that uh, if you look at the bottom here you see that there are 22 pages in my document i'm going to zoom them out so that we can see multiple pages here so here you see that you see that there are so many pages in my document some pages have chapter names like these and chapter names are in the center and some pages are section so uh, they are on the they are aligned on the left side so uh, so yeah so these are uh, according to my expectation that all of these are spread to all of this page so now i want to create a table of contents which is automatically created i i didn't need to so if i if i told you that create a page right after the cover page and insert a table of contents there so you would say that the first thing we can do i we can actually you know it's easier to do i can just place my cursor blinking at the last line last word after the last word and press control enter and as soon as we do that you see that uh, you know a new page is created and chapter 1 is pushed down to the to the second page Uh, the the other way of doing this was i'm using control z control z i can place the cursor at the first point of chapter 1 and i can press control enter and now you see control chapter 1 has pushed down to the second page whereas this is the now this is the second page and chapter 1 is on the third page so second page is now empty okay so uh, on the second page I, i so if i if you had to create a table of contents what would you do you will copy all of these chapter and section names to the first page this page and you would then go to each of these section names for example section 2.1 you will uh, go uh, select this text and you will see at the bottom here what is the page number you will see that this is page 10 so you will write down in front of section 2.1 on this page that it belongs to page number 10 so i want to do something that will automatically create all of that and you don't need to go to every heading and find out which page it is on and by the way during working sometimes the page pages change so if the pages have changed during working then it is it is it is really difficult to change the page numbers manually and checking and keep checking all the changes in page numbers for each of the headings so this tool is going to be really handy for for us so i i go to the insert option and i go to uh, table of contents option and in the table of contents i see an option called table of contents index or bibliography so i select this and by the way before i select this option i must make sure that i my cursor should be blinking at the point and let me first so i'm going to uh, use the clear formatting option and i'm going to leave my cursor blinking at the start of the second page and then i'm going to go to the insert option insert table of contents and then i'm going to select table of contents and i'm going to see uh, yet another uh, menu which is a, la- a large a large menu like this and in this menu i you know uh, select uh, i check this box called additional styles and when i select the additional styles option that this button assign styles becomes enabled i select this button and i see this uh, you know option me- option menu in this options uh, thing we see that all the style names are listed over here the built in styles and the styles that i created right now and all the styles which are listed under zero 
are the styles which are which will not be included in table of contents but i want to include the styles called my chapter heading and my section heading in table of contents so i'm going to use my chapter heading at level 1 level 1 means that in this in this sample area you can see heading 1 and entry these two words these are on level 1 heading 1.1 heading 1.2 these are on level 2 and if there were sub headings they could be put on level 3 and level 4 and uh, and so on so i could i am going to bring this my section heading to level 2 my chapter heading on level 1 my section heading to level 2 and all the built in styles will be you know kept or they will be left on uh, level 0 then i am going to press okay then i am going to press okay just one once more but before i go uh, press okay i can give different title to my table of content i could type here something else like table of contents for my project etc you know like this or i we don't really need this so i'm going to get rid of this so i press okay and you see that there's magically the complete table of content has appeared and uh, here you see that uh, the table of content has a heading which says table of contents and then chapter 1 is actually physically placed on page number 3 this is by the way you cannot edit this directly from here you'll have to do something else and then all the sections they are separated indented out a bit and then page numbers are actual page numbers of those headings that you have just seen now let's final thing we are done uh, the final thing i just want to demonstrate to you for example you were typing your project report and the last heading this last heading due to too much text in the second last heading the last heading was pushed down to two more pages and the page number of the last heading was now page number 25 so now on run time the page number of one of the headings has changed so let's see if that change is reflected in this automatic table of contents so i'm going to go and i'm going to zoom in zoom in and i'm going to see that the last heading still says page number 23 so in order to correct that you simply right click this table of content and you select this option called update index and as soon as you click update index you see that page number of the last heading is updated to page number 25 amazing option very convenient thing to do for large documents and uh, i hope you understood the concept uh, if you don't you can ask uh, any question chapter 5 is right now located at page number 16 so let me uh, place the cursor at the beginning of chapter 5 name and use control enter two times and you see now chapter 5 is uh, instead of 16 it is now on page number 18 and all of the uh, you know uh, uh, the other uh, all the heading names which are after chapter 5 name they will also be relocated to other page numbers so now let's go and see what happened to our table of contents so here you see that chapter 5 is still on page number 16 it is shown to be on page number 16 i'm going to right click this i'm going to use the update index so i'm going to simply right click this uh, in this gray area anywhere and i'm going to click on update index so now you see that chapter 5 is shown on page number 18 and all of the remaining uh, you know headings the page numbers for them are also updated also changed which is uh, you know as i said earlier is a great option and this is i, I would say no uh, large document can uh, you know survive without uh, an automated uh, table of contents by the way you can also add bibliography list of figures all of those things can also be ma made automatically using uh, these options which are available uh, you know here